Welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. We are located on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and are interested in hearing of any encounters or sightings from here on the island. If you've had an encounter or sighting, please give us a call or text us your experience at 778-227-7588. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. My name is Bob, and this occurred in the rural parts of eastern Ohio in the summer of 2016. Being a garbage truck driver certainly isn't the most glamorous job there is, but it's good, stable employment. I've been driving for my company for eight years and was thrilled when the opportunity to take on a more rural route came up unexpectedly. I was hoping it would be a little less strenuous, as it seems the rural people tend to have less large heavy items to throw away every week. Plus, it would be nice not to be fighting traffic, people yelling that I'm blocking them, and all the other fun things that come with suburban trash pickup. Anyway, I'd been driving this route for a few months when I noticed that many of the trash cans were suddenly being overturned, and many of the garbage bags ripped open with the trash strewn about along one particular stretch of the route. This struck me as odd, as most of the customers out this way on this route were very meticulous about their trash, especially since the bears were known to be a problem and more commonly, trash pandas. It was early one morning, and the sun wasn't even up yet. I got out of the truck to get the cans at the end of a driveway. I had just emptied the can and was returning it to the end of the customer's driveway when I turned around to see something large moving in the trees along the opposite side of the road. Now, it was still pretty dark in the pre-dawn light, but I could see that something was definitely moving over there. Now, I typically carry a small flashlight on my belt loop, I unclipped the flashlight and scanned along the trees, but whatever it was, it was staying just far enough back in the darkness that I couldn't see it. I thought maybe it was a black bear maybe standing up on its back legs or something, and it might be easily provoked, so I chose to walk down the passenger side of the truck and got in the truck from there. Once I climbed over the driver's seat, I scanned the opposite side of the road again with my flashlight, but saw nothing. I didn't have anything else happen until the next week. It started at the stop two driveways down from where the incident happened the previous week. I was waiting for the can lift to finish emptying the cans when I heard something moving in the trees that lined the opposite side of the road. Again, I got my flashlight out and started scanning. Nothing there. Could have been a stray dog moving in the brush for all I knew. So I put the small flashlight back in my pocket and kept it handy and went on with my business. I went down to the next set of cans got out and returned their cans to the end of the driveway, turned around to find something standing at the edge of the road. It was still pre-dawn, but it was getting light enough that I could see well, but not well enough to believe what I was seeing. However, I might have faltered for a second, but I pulled the flashlight out of my pocket and flipped it on. I caught a quick glimpse of the creature before it melted back into the darkness of the trees. Now I had a longer view of the back of the creature, its brown fur covered head and shoulders before it disappeared. My first thought really was that someone was playing a prank on me. It was only about as tall as me, maybe an inch or more, and I'm five foot ten inches, so it might have been six feet tall, and the body, it just didn't look as massive or muscular as I'd always heard Bigfoot was supposed to be. The face was how people have described it, leathery with wide set eyes and a wide set of jaws. Oddly, I don't remember much about the nose, Anyway, because it wasn't massive and it wasn't eight or nine feet tall, I really thought someone was just being stupid and silly. I got back in the truck and finished my route. On the third week, I was especially vigilant as I came to that heavily wooded area of my route. I had thought all week about why someone would bother to prank me and why it would be important enough for anyone to dress up and go out and do that before dawn. I was used to encountering trash pandas and the odd bear, but more often than not, deer nosing around the trash cans in the early morning hours. But I had never encountered someone in a gorilla suit trying to prank me. Anyway, on this day, I was making good time on the route and was running almost a full 20 minutes ahead when I hit the wooded area. I put my high beams on so I could see the sides of the road better. I had just loaded the second can onto the back lift of the truck when I felt something hit my leg. I looked down and I saw a small stick laying on the road. Now, I was getting a little pissed. You know, I was just out here trying to do my job, making a living, and some jerk thinks it's funny to mess with me. I was getting tired of it. I shined my light over into the trees and, of course, saw nothing. As the can had been lifted and dumped into the truck, 
I yelled out and called them a very not nice name and gave them a universal hand gesture, and I made sure that the tree line could see me well. I then replaced the empty cans at the end of the driveway and walked slowly and deliberately to the driver's side of the truck, climbed inside and slammed the door. Imagine my shock when just before putting the truck into gear, I looked out towards the trees and saw that idiot in a costume. He was standing with one foot on the road and the other in the slight ditch that ran between the road and the trees. He was standing behind the spread path of the bright headlights, but between the dawn sky and the lights on my truck and the ambient glow of the light cast from the headlights in that general direction, he was clear enough for me to see, and I could see that he was looking at me. He just stood there. At this point, I still really thought it was someone just messing with me. My mind had already dismissed every other alternative. I gave another universal hand gesture and rolled down to the next customer about 200 yards down the road. Thinking that me in the truck would surely move faster than the idiot in a gorilla suit trying to move through a heavy tree line, I was wrong. Again, I loaded and emptied cans on the back lift when I heard movement in the trees again across the road. I couldn't believe that the idiot in the gorilla costume had caught up to me. He had to have ran like crazy, I thought. I pulled out my small flashlight again and shined it right into the idiot's eyes. He squinted, but didn't move at all. He opened his mouth, he opened his mouth, and I heard a low growl start, and I knew from the open mouth that this was no idiot in a costume. The eyes were real too, and now I noticed that they were spaced farther apart than any humans could possibly be in a mask. Somewhere in my mind, I understood that this idiot was also much, much larger than last week's idiot, and it stood a good foot taller than me, maybe a foot and a half. It also had a massive body shape, and it was visible in my flashlight beam. Now I was worried. My brain tried to sort out what I was seeing. The only thing it coherently told me was to get back in my truck and get out of there. This thing did not look or sound happy at all. While my brain is telling me this, the creature took a large step forward, closing almost half the distance between us on the road. I didn't wait any longer to decide. I ran like lightning down the driver's side of the truck and climbed into that cab faster than I ever had. I had no sooner closed the door when the growling sound was now in my left ear. It was standing directly at the driver's side window of the truck. Panicked, I threw the truck into gear and started rolling, but if you've ever driven a big garbage truck, they start rolling slowly and then pick up speed. Suddenly, I felt the entire truck rock heavily to the right. I looked in my side mirror to see the creature pushing on the side of the truck. Behind it, further back on the road, I saw the shorter creature standing in the glow of the flashing yellow truck lights. But my real concern at that moment was the big one pushing on the truck. It was now trotting alongside the truck, keeping pace even as the truck picked up speed. And with every other step, it would give a mighty shoving push that would rock the truck harder with each push. So the faster I went, the harder it pushed on the truck. I had two thoughts. First, that the creature might actually tip my truck, and secondly, that all doubt about an idiot in a gorilla costume was now gone. No human could possibly push against this massive garbage truck and make it lean like that. I gave the truck everything I had and got it rolling at a good pace, and it was with a sigh of relief as I watched in the side mirror when the creature jogged to a halt and my truck stopped rocking. And let me say, once I got moving, I did not stop that truck. I drove right past the remaining customers along that route. In fact, I didn't stop until I made it back to the truck yard. My supervisor was surprised, but oddly, he didn't ask too many questions. When I handed over the keys and told him I quit, I gave no explanations and would not accept any other offers of a different route. As I walked away, I saw that the last customer's garbage can was still gripped tightly in the lift on the back of the truck. I'd driven away with their garbage can. Sorry, folks, whoever you are. You know, I don't know what that creature wanted. I don't know if it was the sound or the lights of my truck that bothered it. I don't know if it was perhaps mad at me for thinking I was stealing its easy meals, or maybe I was intruding on what he thought it was his territory. But I do know one thing, and I now know why that easy route came up for grabs so unexpectedly. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for listening. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, 
at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.